Hi again. I'm Ann Kroom. I'm an employee owner here at InSource and also its president and CEO. In our first ep six episodes, we examined the operational efficiency 10% challenge through the lens of an OEE project. We started at the beginning with a dream and a goal and gave you pointers on planning, ROI and cost, scope, and technology selection. Now most recently, in episode six, we set the stage for our episode today by installing the Wonderware Performance solution to measure plant performance. You got to actually see what an install technology application might look like. Now at InSource, we talk a lot about how the right technology can be an exciting and critical piece of an overall solution. But it's only a piece. We want everyone to think broader. The solution is not complete until the users are trained, until new pieces of, of technology are integrated into the existing or revised procedures and routines. So in this episode, we'll start to show you how to do just that. If you missed any of the previous episodes, you can watch the studio recordings on our website. So let's get on with it. Today, in episode seven, David Wilt and John Matura, two manufacturing consultants for InSource Solutions, will take the MES solution you saw in episode six and make it usable on the plant floor by handling a multi multiple details required for a successful implementation. People, process, technology, they all play a role. This episode is entitled, How to Deploy an OEE Solution. So here's David to kick us off. I'm David Wilt, an employee owner with InSource Solutions, working with clients deploying manufacturing solutions. Uh, during a OEE implementations, deployments, I should say, uh, uh, example today, the production supervisors work with consultants to create a project plan timeline that will ensure that all the details get planned and scheduled so when it's time for the system to go live, there are no surprises. Having ownership of the project is vital for success as anytime changes are made on the floor, many associates are affected and they need to know that leadership is supporting the changes. Selecting the right person or persons to head up this part of the project is important, so having someone with a well-rounded knowledge about the plant is crucial for success so they can facilitate any of the required details within the plant. The project teams are formed and work commences quickly. Challenges the team faces can be many, but being organized at this front end helps keep the work moving along. Teams will need to address the following situations as they go through this project phase. One, how to deploy while we maintain a production schedule. Two, how do we handle shutdown periods or unscheduled weekends? Three, what kind of equipment changes will there be, if any? What procedural changes will be necessary and, and what changes for standards will be necessary as well? What training will be necessary and how much time is required? What constraints do we have and, and how difficult is this going to be to deploy? As you can see, there is a long list of items to cover, but cover we will. Re remembering the reason for performing the work is to aid the plant on reaching their 10% OEE improvement. A lot, of a lot of improvement. Now the challenge is how to develop and deploy the OEE solution. In other words, we have the Wonderware performance installed and configured, but what's next? John Matura will be taking us through roles of users and hardware requirements for a typical deployment. John, it's all yours. Thanks, David. I'm John Matura, also an employee owner of InSource Solutions, and I'll be discussing a couple of the portions of the plan required for a successful deployment. It starts with, with knowing your users. The master list of users is sent from the Human Resources Department to the IT Department so these users with access levels can be added to the Active Directory, which manages the various applications used inside the plant. Users will be assigned user IDs and passwords prior to the introductory training so that the users can practice logging on onto the system during the training classes. Management of user IDs and passwords are handled by the assigned resources. Part of the planning for deployment takes into account the various roles and responsibilities that comes along with deploying a new OEE system. 
It is good best practice actually to judiciously spread the new workload around a bit to increase ownership and reduce kickback from assignees. The list above describes the resources required to make the project a success. To ensure a smooth transition from current operations to our desired future state within OE performance software, it is desirable to have multiple human machine interfaces, HMIs, to enter data from the floor to tablets to laptops, depending on the environment and customer needs. If the client goes the HMI route, you need to be sure that they are, they are in the proper locations where data is normally collected. A walkthrough group should be formed from maintenance, operations, quality, sanitation, and safety to ensure the best overall locations for these units are selected. This was a great way to gain ownership from operators as they were able to confirm with us their pref preferred locations. They are the ones using the machines and they should be the ones deciding where the HMIs should go. The importance of these locations cannot be understated as moving the HMIs after they've been installed can be costly. We use the adage, measure twice and cut once, because keeping within budget is always important. Thanks, I'm giving the mic back to David. Uh, thanks, John. A good review on the users and hardware. Now that the technical part is completed, the Wonderware performance, we can work on a training program for the operators. This training can be incorporated into the standard working day or be performed on overtime. At many plants, management decides having overtime would be best due to resource constraints. Many plants are lean regarding operators. No extra associates, associates are there to cover the position. So training is done in, in one hour increments prior to shift, you know, the shift starting by a signed supervisor and a manufacturing consultant. A PowerPoint deck is created to introduce users to why the plant has decided to incorporate OEE into the daily routines and what OEE means. The, the goals of training include operators being able to log into the uh, system successfully, uh, an understanding of OEE and what it means to them, uh, why is the plant going this direction, understanding of the new roles and responsibilities, uh, also a reduction of the fear of the unknown. Once a person gets introduced to the OEE methodologies, the fears begin to subside. Uh, they're prepared for a uh, go live and let's look at some of the details. Shutdown and unscheduled production lines are managed through an unscheduler application. This tool tells the system when the lines are uh, you know, supposed to run and when they are not. Since OEE measures only scheduled production time, this is very important to keeping the data clean. Uh, the, the production folks inform the performance application several details about the product being run by utilization of a changeover screen as well, which is integrated with the ERP and perhaps the energy and quality systems, depending on the customer. Uh, details of vital information are handled by the changeover screen, uh, as I'm showing you here, as follows. So there's the production SKU, which relates to performance and location within the plant. There's the rate at which unit producing machines should operate. There's the amount of product created as machine cycle through process, and amount of total units to be produced on a production order. The, the data referenced in the changeover sets the stage for a successful run. Operators are trained on the importance of initiating the changeovers on time, so the product being produced on the line is what, the de what, is, is, what is deployed onto the HMIs. Uh, <coughs> go live and standard operation, now, now, now that we have a a good understanding of the people, process, and technology involved, it is time to do that go live with the system. The, the go live means out with the old and in with the new way of doing things. Where before the operators would run their machines and record data on paper or verbally, they are now required to use the OEE system to record all of the pertinent information as trained. The first few shifts of any go live can be a little hectic as typically five to 20 people or more on the shift uh, are, you know, uh, need to have follow-up training to make sure that data gets entered correctly and on time. The, the first two days that a person you know, uses the system is typically the most stressful, but the learning curve for usage is quite steep. By the, by the third shift or so of usage, uh, most every user feels comfortable within the environment. You know, lead supervisors make sure there is appropriate coverage on the floor for the second and third shifts as well. 
Uh, you can imagine the long, the long days some of the trainers will experience. You know, one thing is, is uh, noted as, as we train the users on the floor is the fact that the standardized work the operators have always done doesn't really change just the way they record data about their work, for now at least. There will be time allotted in the future to allow for those operational changes and improvements. Thanks, David. I'm going to review what InSource calls a day in life scenario, demonstrating how all these steps integrate into a normal workday for a supervisor and his team. First, operators go to their assigned machine locations and they log into the HMI into the OE application. The operator chooses the proper product code from within the changeover application. When the changeover is completed within the system, the operator performs standard machine operations. Along the way, there is a likelihood that a machine may stop working in an unplanned way. So the operator does what they normally do, and they get the problem corrected either by themselves or perhaps with the help from maintenance. After the problem has been resolved, the operator enters a reason for the breakdown into the HMI or laptop tablet. There have been codes created during episode 6 to cover these types of problems. The HMI now has accurate downtime data recorded in minutes and seconds that previously would have been more of a guess as to how long a machine might have been down. It's great to have accurate data. It reduces arguments between departments when there is a production meeting. Uh, the operator performs work as required and will make changeovers on the HMI as first described, but some days there's not even many to worry about. Then when the shift is over, the next operator picks up where the first one left off and the process continues. Changeovers, downtime recording is primary OE functions. Waste is also entered on the shift floor report and is tracked in either pounds or units depending on the location where the scrap was generated. Waste is subtracted from the good product made and the quality aspect of OEE. Remembering the calculation for OEE, JB tells his boss that the availability 90% and the performance of the line 90% and the quality of the product production 99% gave them an 80.2% OEE today, very good and above goal. Yeah, so John just spoke about the OEE calculations for a point of, so for a point of clarity, let's, let's, let's dive into the details a bit. OEE does have these factors that when multiplied together in decimal form, yield the OEE value. Uh, the classic OEE formula is scheduled availability times performance compared to standard times quality. So the total product uh, divided by the total product produced is your quality uh, math. As John, as John described for this example, availability 90% uh, you know, times the performance of the line 90% times the quality of the production is 99% gave them an OED 0.2% OEE today which is very good and above goal. So this means that uh, the availability of 90% for the scheduled time the machine was to run uh, it was running 90% of the time. The 10% the non-running time includes changeovers and breakdowns. Uh, the performance of 90%, uh, this means the machine you know, ran 90% of its potential uh, of the expected standard. The 10% that was missing could be because of running slow situations, or the machine needs some sort of maintenance to get it up to the standard, or the standard could be wrong. Uh, as far as quality goes, uh, a quality of 99%, you know, for every 100 units created, one of them didn't make it to a customer, you know. The good units created are divided by the, the good units plus the bad units out of spec, uh, which, you know, times 100%, which is where you got the 99%. Well, thank you, John and David. You make a great team, just like Sunny and Cher, or maybe peanut butter and jelly. Anyway. In this seventh episode, we hope you walked away with a much better appreciation for what is really required to deploy a successful OEE solution. Please join us again for episode eight, where we will continue to focus on the soft skills and the homework required to engage the necessary parts of your organization in your new OEE solution. Now we're really close to driving improved results and we don't want to drop the ball now. So go to our website, sign up for this 20-minute episode 8. Now finally, 
We hope you're getting great value out of this Extreme Makeover series. The feedback we've received so far has been truly wonderful. But we don't want you to have to wait until Episode 10 finishes to get started. So to have an in-source consultant visit your plant to see what type of results are attainable for you, contact us at the number on your screen or at www.insource.solutions. And finally, I'd like to remind you of our Extreme Factory Makeover Contest. Entry deadline is coming up. It's April 20th, but we think it's worth your time to enter. The winner will receive free two-week engagement from InSource Solutions and Wonderware. Now this is a, a $45,000 software and services value. So go to our website, it's under Extreme Factory Makeover to enter. See you next time.